Good afternoon, everybody. We are missing someone, as you can see. Greg is, from what I heard, through the grapevine, actually meeting with Captain Sully today. He's out of town. I just saw a picture, and it looks like he's having a great visit with the captain. So, Greg, I hope you're watching. We have two great guests today. Jerry Ferretti, the man that does everything, Ferretti Films, NY Long Island Film Festival, the Mutant Kings, producer. What else do you do, Jerry? Writer. Writer. Uh, filmmaker, actor. Actor singer. and works with the Breakfast Club. Right, and I do this. Exactly. It's always great. And he's great tan. Look at you. You look great. Thank you. And lucky for us today, we have a photographer who's going to take our picture today, I would assume. Quite the camera. Alex M. Wolf from Concierge Photography. He's also involved with many different things at LongIslandPortfolio.com. Uh, produced a few films. F uh, director of photography. Director of photography. Mm -hmm. And I see him everywhere when there's events, and we haven't had some for a while. No. Haven't seen you for a while. No, but uh, last one was Rhonda's event. It's all and I all sat in that big chair, and you said, sit in that chair, and you made me take my picture. So that was the last time I saw you. That was a long mm -hmm. time ago. Yeah. Uh, but now everything's opening up, correct? It is, especially golf outings. Right. But other events are opening up as well. Yeah, I don't do the golf thing. I go to the dinner. Oh, mm -hmm. I only I, I don't golf. I don't golf. But, um, in the open bar, right? Yeah, well, I always go to the open bar. So tell me about this shirt, because when you came in, I looked at his shirt, and I said, you wear a pajama top. <laughs> well, yeah, without really getting the close-up, uh, this has sharks, octopus, and scuba divers. I'm a scuba diving instructor. Yeah, because from a distance, it looks like something else. <laughs> does oh, it does it? Like something else to you. Really? Oh, <laughs> we know where your mind's going. <laughs> but my, my daughter got this for me for Father's Day, I think, two years ago. And you still have it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I wear it every Father's Day and... Uh, and every day it. after Father's Day or whatever, right? Sometimes, yes. Mm -hmm. But I, I wore it tonight because... Uh, I don't really talk about the scuba diving so much. Okay. And this would open up that conversation. Oh, okay. So you scuba dive. I scuba dive. I'm an instructor. I don't teach anymore. Uh, liability issues. Mm -hmm. And I do underwater photography and video all over the world. Whoa. That's exciting. I've never known that about you. I just know you do the regular pictures. Well, so if I ever make an underground un underwater movie, you're the guy. He's the man. I, I absolutely I've am. Seen. Cool. So when you take the photo, you're in an outfit, a scuba outfit, and in the water? Well, uh, certainly. So um, I use an underwater camera. Whoa, look at that. Jeez. So actually a, a, a Sony camera goes in here, and usually I have so many lights that you can't see me on the outside. I didn't bring them for, for this. And, of course, I have everything that we use for scuba diving. Interesting. As well. So what is that, like a case? That yeah, the so this is th yeah, this is an underwater housing. Okay. And wh what it does is um, it protects the camera from, of course, getting wet. It's, it slides in here. Wow. And we have uh, focusing knobs and zoom knobs. And it has uh, leak detection and a vacuum seal to make sure that no water gets in. And this piece is a called a port. And we have a different port for every lens. Right. So if we have a wide-angle lens when we're shooting sharks and whales, we have to use a dome port. If I'm doing night photography, we're doing nudibranchs uh, or things like this um, sea anemone. Yeah. Um, we we, ch we ch change. Of course, that's all above water. We can't do that when we're when we're in the water. Right. Very cool. How did you learn how to do that underwater? How did that happen? Well, I think that, I don't know about the, the audience, but I think we all remember Jacques Cousteau in the 1960s and Primus and Flipper. Yeah. And so yeah. the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau, I just got the, bu the bug when I was a kid in Brooklyn. And it's something I always loved. You know, the, the Coney Island Aquarium was a great place for seeing underwater stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it just stuck with me. Then Jeez. when I went to college, I got certified as a scuba diver and started my underwater uh, photo and video career back in 1970, oh, gee, 76, wow. at Florida Institute of Technology in Jensen Beach. That's amazing. Nice. Can't even imagine, can you? Like, Hey, everybody finds where they belong, right? And you, you knew, very you knew true. early. That, that, that's it. And, um, you know, photography, you know, goes with that. 
And it, this has always been a side gig until uh, 2007, uh, actually 2012, mm -hmm. um, where I was doing corporate work for um, the cosmetics industry. Yeah, I know Wall you were Street. very busy. Mm. Um, you know, I was doing all different stuff, IT work, and IT uh, combines with photography now, you know, because of Photoshop. So right. all that stuff really ties together. So all the different components of my life, even when I was working as a cook, ties into my food photography. So you cooked? You were a chef? No, I was a oh. cook. Um, there's a big difference between a chef and a cook. And oh, I'll really? be the first person to tell you that, um, yeah, cook, cooks are people who can make food. Chefs run a business. They, uh, they do much more creation. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And they have to manage a, a big staff where a cook just has to manage His the station or whatever. Where, where did you cook? Catania Caterers in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coney Island Avenue, uh, mm -hmm. across from the 61st Precinct. Oh, so you had all the policemen. We did. As your uh, guests and uh, mm -hmm. fans. Well, well, we had the policemen on the one side, and we had um, extended family on, on the so other. So what made you switch from cooking to photography? Just uh, the whole idea that you got into no. the photos? Or? No, I, I, um, cooking's a lot of work. It is, on um, your feet, too. I, I took my daughter to my, my friend. I have a lot of friends, of course, who are chefs and who run restaurants. My daughter thought she wanted to be a chef. Her name is Alex, and when she was about 10, I took her to meet my friend Paolo over from Alyssa's Restaurant. You probably know it over in North Belmore. Yes, I do. And mm -hmm. so she interviewed him for school to say, what's, what's it like to be a chef? And mm -hmm. when he talked about getting up early, working all the holidays, working late, um, yep. A lot. Making mm -hmm. sure everything is, is, is clean. She had said, you know what? I don't want to be a chef. Well, that was good probably for She her. learned early. What did she do instead? So she got her master's degree in professional communications. Her undergrad degree was in art. Uh, so she's an artist. And she uses her art degree with her communication skills for a company called Trinet that does uh, benefits across the country, permanently remote. And Jeez. she creates online learning um, for uh, employees. For employees, and that happens what my wife does. Oh, so she's, so she's following in mom's footsteps. One hundred percent. That's always a thrill for a mom when yeah. somebody. Uh, you know, I remember my daughter. She used to say, "I'm not you," and she used to say, "I'm not doing what you do." Well, she's doing. She did what I did, and she's still doing sort of like what I do. And she has a talk show. No, she doesn't have a talk <laughs> show. But you know what I mean. She does yeah. events. She worked at planting okay. fields for t el ten, 11 years. Mm -hmm. And then before that, she worked in media. So we both kind of right. do the same thing. But when she was 18, she wanted no part of doing what I did. So what does she do? Well, now that she works right for now. the St. Vincent de Paul Outreach, the corporate office in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So she went from planting fields on Long Island. She moved to Maryland. And she helps people build houses for the poor. But she doesn't build them. She's the marketing, communications, yes. event. Mm -hmm. So she's still doing the same kind of thing. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's just odd how your kids do follow you when they really don't want to. You know, they battle when they're young. Yes. You know, my, my older daughter sings. Right. And for a while there, she was like, I'm not doing and this. And she's beautiful, your daughter. Thank you. Oh. And both of them sing, but the older one is, you know, the one who probably yeah. should be singing. And now she's... Falling back into it, she wants to That's do it again. That's great, and she's so your daughter's great. Thank mm -hmm. you. I love the pictures. So today is my granddaughter Caitlin Antoinette's birthday. And she's not here. Right. No, she's in Maryland. So happy birthday, Caitlin! I have uh, presents that's coming to you in the mail. A lot of surprises, and Greg is in here to blow you a kiss because Greg loves my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So happy birthday, Caitlin! And uh, I'll be posting your picture tomorrow on your birthday. And um, Today is National Pralines Day. Did you know that? I did not know that. National what? Pralines. You know pralines. what a praline yeah. is, right? Okay, yeah. Uh. It's, also, it's also National Handshake Day. So there you go. I always shake We can do hand. this now. Handshake Day and National Bomb Pop Day. I don't know what that is. Do you? So they are the red, white, and blue ices. Oh, uh, they Blue on say top, that? red on the bottom, white in the middle with the fins coming out. Okay, so you knew that. I didn't because, you know, and I'm not a and kid. And if you knew, we'd probably have them here. That's right? true because I didn't realize it. And I would have had them when we could have eaten them on the stage. Uh, and, and when you called me, I was on the way out of shop, um, ShopRite. So you could have picked them up. I would have bought them. I know. He's a doll. Really a nice man. So on the show, everybody gets Italian bread. 
because I believe in breaking bread with people for relationships. Jerry is not getting any today because he's been on the show quite a lot. <laughs> well, at the price of Italian bread, I understand that. I mean, Jerry's getting a cupcake, which I know you love cupcakes. I, who doesn't love cupcakes? This is your Italian bread. Well, thank you. And you bring it home and share it with somebody, your significant other, daughter, dog, whatever. I've got some eggplant uh, that <laughs> I fried the other night, some homemade sauce. And this and is some your cupcake, fresh. and you're a star. Wow. So you got a star. But everyone should see that. Okay. So we always have something to eat. We always have, sometimes we have restaurants on. And um, tonight, they still might be coming. Anchor Down in Seaford, Seaford is one of our sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Steve is a doll. He has two restaurants, one in Seaford, one in Belmore. And the fish is delicious. The food is great. But the best is the lobster roll. So Anchor Down, it's in Merrick, and it's in Seaford. So make okay. sure you guys check it out. Tell them Breakfast Club sent you. And we go there at least once a month. And he's really a nice guy. He lives over here. And he's been on the show a few times. So let's talk a little bit about you. And then we're going to look at some of these pictures. Jerry, mm. I hear rumors. A lot I'm going hearing on. rumors. First of all, you played here. It was great. Everybody Thank you. loved you. He does an in. Elvis impersonation. And just did a play with Eddie Sessa. Well, we don't call it impersonation oh, anymore. Oh, what do you call it? All right. Tribute artist. Oh, okay. That's right. Right. See, I they mean, have to correct me because I don't know. All right. This stuff. I mean, uh, you know, okay. it's funny. I always say how the Elvis tribute artist, the impersonator, has been around for decades. I mean, really, since Elvis died. And now, because it was always looked almost like down upon, like made, not, not made fun of, but everybody who put on a suit was an Elvis impersonator. Mm -hmm. And now the rage is tribute bands. You go to yes. a lot of places, there's tribute bands, and I always joke that they're basically Elvis impersonators, but with a band. I mm -hmm. mean, and it's and it's the Elvis impersonation tribute band has never really gone out of style. For me, it did. For about a decade, I stopped doing it because I got into filmmaking and right. my mm -hmm. original music and the band. And a lot of people would ask me, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? And it's, and it's so popular, and it's fun. So, quick story. Um, Guy Caligori, who owns Patio Pizza in St. James was on Fox News. The political thing happened and Trump got behind him and everything. And I ended up going there for dinner and um, I met him and very nice man. And I said, you need, you need to get Elvis in here. And he said, do you know anybody? And I said, yeah, take a look at my Facebook page because I had the band up and singing and I do, we do some Elvis with the band. He called me the next day and he's like, I want to hire you. So I did it there and then people saw it. And they started calling me again saying, are you doing Elvis? So I started doing it again, basically because of that. And we're actually going to be at Patio Pizza uh, Saturday. And I'll be doing my Elvis show there Saturday and again in August. That's and, great. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun. People love mm -hmm. it. You know, Elvis never goes out of style. No. Are so. you also going to do weddings? Uh, I was at a wedding recently, and um, someone did the John Travolta. I know. Probably he's on our show. <laughs> and, and he's he, on our show. He, he was absolutely he's terrific. awesome. He's from and South Everybody South. loved it. So when you have yeah. a tribute, band tribute person that really brings another level to any event it does and and elvis is timeless i yeah. mean he's uh i used to do i mean i literally was doing three four shows on a weekend back in the day and i got to the point where i just said you know what i don't want to be someone just else elvis. <laughs> yeah i want to do my I own do stuff, other stuff you know too, right and, and that's a hard thing to do because everybody knows elvis you go in and say i'm gonna sing an elvis song everybody knows it um so I got back into, you know, I started working in theaters, a couple of theaters on Long Island. Mm -hmm. I started doing my acting again, which led to picking up my writing again. I used to have a murder mystery company when I was married. I had a, mm -hmm. uh, we did dinner theater, murder mysteries. So I started writing again, and my passion was always really to write and produce film, and and I, I did that. Um, I made, I wrote a feature film, and I produced it. And Yeah, that was the name of that again? No. The Mark. The Mark. I was there when we you saw it the first time. And that was like, you know, everybody said, make a short film, don't make a feature. I made a feature. And it was literally, I mean, very proud of it. A lot of we people showed were it there. It was four great. or five theaters on the island. And, uh, it was great. It really was. It was, it was uh, a true effort. Um, it's, a major a it's a major accomplishment. It is. Everything going from the shooting to the editing to the distribution. It's a distribution. lot of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to get it done and to have everything fall into place. And we shot all over Long Island, Nassau, Suffolk County. And then it led to um, making various shorts, which then I started the film festival. And which now is outrageous. I'm with you two years now. Yeah. 
And we're going to be I'm doing part that of it every year. October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. It's a huge event. We were doing it just Friday and Saturday. We're now adding Thursday. We're going to have an opening night party, and we'll be showing oh, films in uh, we'll be there. Uh, South Shore Theater in, in Lindenhurst, and we're getting the whole village involved. It's growing. It's, it's, it's definitely be great. growing. I mean, and, uh, um, we're going to have a few authors there with me, about yep. maybe four, five, we'll six have a authors. Couple tables set up. And these authors, their goal is meet a producer. Sure. Maybe right. you'll get a film out of it. That's what I want for my book because mm -hmm. my book is true stories of all these people on Long Island, all Long Islanders. Funny stories too. You know, it's it's you being a photographer and cinematographer mm -hmm. and our person here doing the sound. I was talking to him earlier, and it's it's really all about networking and getting people meeting each other and interacting mm -hmm. and. I found that when I went to festivals, a lot of the festivals, no no knock against the festivals, but they're businesses, and right. they're about the festival. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make a festival that was about the filmmaker, and, and that's the thing that all the people who put their films in say, we made them feel like they were important. That people, yeah. I, right. have a biz I have a business. I have other income. The film festival is really about, and what we get out of it is we've also, we're meeting people. We're meeting mm -hmm. cinematographers. We're meeting actors. So... In growing that part of our business, the festival helps us in that way, and we're able to help others in that way. So, um, and, a, and a big part of it is filmmakers who don't have the resources, the money. It seemed, being an Elvis guy, Elvis walked into a studio in 1955, 1954, and beat up guitar on his back, sang That's All Right Mama, and became the biggest sensation the world has ever known. That guy walks into a studio today, they're going to say, get a polished demo, go into a studio, record this song perfectly, mm -hmm. and Elvis would be ignored. It's very hard. I mean, maybe YouTube finds people that way, but they're, we're ignoring a lot of big talent. Things become very formulaic, and even the big festivals you can't get into. Well, that's why yours is so, so nice, because... You got authors looking to talk to producers. You got actors looking to meet a producer. You right. got book, you know, everything going on there at the same time. And then you get to see all these great movies right. that have won. Yep. And, and so we're not genre specific. Sure. Right. You got a horror film, you got a comedy, you got a musical. We, we, we want to see it all women directed, male directed, documentaries, documentaries you yeah. name it, you know. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, it's open to everybody, yeah. and we want to keep it that way, and we want to grow, and each year we hope to expand. And, yeah. um, and the know, Breakfast Club works the closely now someday, so. with Jerry, and now we're part of that. And we're part of this, and we're part of so many things. Right. And it works out great. So, you know, you have some news. I know well, you're going to be doing all, a little shoot, Well, first of all, I want to mention the, the people right? that work with me in the film festival oh, because um, I, I work with an actress. Katie Schrader, she's, she's, she's um, the my right-hand man, for lack of a better term. And a beautiful she woman. She does so much, so much. She's great to work with. Yeah, I like and her. And Paul Lodicano, who submitted a film to our first-year festival. And I'm, I'm just going to say that name again. Paul Lodicano. Paul, you remember Valentina, and, I'm sure. And we have to say this name a couple Paul of times. Paul Lodicano, Paul Lodicano, Paul Lodicano. And then there's Lodicano. this other person. Um, Donna Morales. Donna Morales, nope. I love her. She took we me to a Chinese restaurant, which I don't eat Chinese. Right. You don't eat Chinese? No, I don't like Chinese. I'm Italian. Italians don't like Chinese. Wow, I, my, my wife's don't Italian. Like Chinese? Not, well, well not this my Italian. family. This is Italian Italian. Like yeah, this Italian doesn't like Chinese. Yeah, my <laughs> family, we never ate it. We weren't allowed. No, my mother was 93 years old, Marion Polichetti, and we, we were at the Chinese restaurant yesterday having yeah. some nice spicy oh, nice. food. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Well, anyway, my pa family, we just didn't do it. So I only started to taste Chinese food after I got married. And Donna took you there. No, but I did oh. go with Donna. But I, it was decent, but I only eat Chinese once every eight months. Well, Donna came on the show, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw her under the bus here because when she came on the show, she was talking about the film festival. And every single time she was going to mention Paul and Katie, she stopped and mentioned me again. Oh, Donna. And, and Right. So it became like a joke because we were watching the show. I was like, and she would come right up. And she said, oh, I work with, and then you'd sidetrack, and oh, she wouldn't okay. do it. She so I said, I'm going to give Well, them Donna, the listen, we love you, and Donna's a perfect example of she's so big right now. Everybody's she's hiring her. She's all over the her. place. Yeah. And she's mentoring me a little bit, and now so is Jerry. And she's great. She's brought us a lot of <laughs> films through her, all of her connections. And we're working. Paul just wrote, wrote a film that we filmed last year. Oh, and we just yeah. finished. Paul's it's now being entered into the. You know, it's. I always tell people. Just make stuff, make content, write stories, make films, make a five-minute short, make a ten-minute mm -hmm. short, make a feature. Someone's always going to be there to criticize it. Oh, absolutely. 
But you have to make it for yourself. Everybody else, it, you're going to improve exactly. every single time you make another film. You're going to learn from the previous one. You're going to make mistakes along the way. I saw an interview with Ron Howard, and he said he still finishes films, and they break his heart because things didn't come out the way. Right, and this is Ron but Howard, that's so because you're passionate about what you do. That's what happens. Right, and and that's what it is. You know, you got to keep that passion. And yes, uh, you just brought up news. There is news. Um, What's the news? First of all, what are you doing here? What am Aren't I do you doing something here? Yes. Well, that, we're going to be filming. Uh, I, I, you know, Greg has been kind enough to let us uh, Greg is use great. the, the, yeah, the bar. Greg we're going to be filming. Mm -hmm. I wrote a short film. Um, we're going to film here, among other places. And, and I'm uh, going to be here. You. Nice. Uh, this is another big announcement. Is I'm giving you a small role in the <laughs> film. So film debut. Uh, this is the first time you are acting. Correct? Yeah, I know. But I mean, uh, on film. The story is kind of who I am. A little bit. Yeah. From what bit. you tell me. Yes. You and know, I've been on that, both you know. sides of the track. I've been the advocate, and I've also been yeah. screwed around with on in corporate America. And I believe, <laughs> you know, everybody, I believe everybody can act if they're given the right role. Some people can portray other characters. They can sink their teeth into a role. But in my films, I've put a lot of non-actors. But if you cast them right, and you can get them to just be them. Right. Acting is being. Acting is just being in the moment. It's reacting. Well, it's ignoring the ca the camera. It's making believe that camera's not there. Exactly. Right. And you're having that conversation with the right. person next to you and other set mem people. So well, that's I, not I'm to say some people don't put on a character and well, there's, there's different oh, acting. Both, sure. right. But Spencer Tracy used to say, no matter what I play, I'm Spencer Tracy being that person, whether I'm a murderer or a judge. So you, you heard know. it here first, Cliff. Okay. Valentina. Look at him. He's movie he's not star. Smiling. It's coming. <laughs> he's going to be there. He's going to be there. <laughs> but actually, the, the big news is is Bridge the Gap, which um, is a film that I wrote a long time ago. Three years ago, I turned it into a play. Um, it's the story of four men who had a band when they were teenagers in the 70s, and they break up, and they reconnect in their 50s, and they have a hit song. But nobody knows it's them, because when the song is recorded, their kids, without their knowledge, uh, create a website and put the song on the internet as if they're four 20-year-olds. So the song becomes a hit, but no one knows it's these four old guys. Is that oh. Millie, Millie Vanilli? The, uh, it's, it draws from a lot of different things, largely <laughs> from my <laughs> life, my dad's life. Uh -huh. and also, I, I turned it into a play three years ago, South Shore Theater. We debuted it. It moved on to James Street. It was very successful. Wrote all the music to it and everything. But the goal was always to turn it back into a screenplay, which I then rewrote it as a screenplay. And although I can't mention a name, of it is not. now in the hands of somebody A-list in Hollywood. So Congrats. keep your fingers crossed, say a prayer, do a rain dance, whatever y whatever it is you can do to make this See, if Greg happen. was here, he'd be serving us a drink, but he's it, not. Right. So, so we can't drink on it, but... Salutes. That's but now great. Now that's where the Mutant Kings came from. To come full circle on everything I'm doing, the band in the film is called the Kings when they were young, but because the kids create this mystique around them and they know no one's going to listen to the old guys, they take pictures of the fathers and mutate them so you can't see how old they are. Wow. And they plaster the word mutant over the Kings. That's great. And the band becomes I'm the so Mutant excited Kings. I'm so excited to be your friend. Hey, you know what? <laughs> and, and now the band exists. Yeah, we well, were the doing band the does play exist. And it was like, hey, why don't we go out and do this? And the irony is the two guys, two of the three guys that are in the band, I went to school with. And I hadn't seen them in 35 and years. And that's so passion. So I literally wrote this mm -hmm. into existence. And now the band, we're playing. I mean, we're booked all throughout Suffolk. I know. the summer and everything. We'll be there, and, and Jerry, you know. It's just like wild. It's like it yeah. just happened. And then you know. you're still hanging out at that place in the uh, Lindenhurst, the Amityville, wherever I was that night. Which one was For that? the film festival. The place where you had the film oh, festival. Oh, the Moose Lodge. The Moose Lodge. Yeah. That's Moose Lodge, where I Lindenhurst wound up going. Moose Lodge, and we're doing an Elvis show there July 31st. Oh, we got to go July and, 31st. Um, Susan, we're going July 31st. Mark it down. Shout the out Moose to Lodge. my... Uh, the they band members too. Yes. Andrew Samore, Pat Ruleman, and and Dan Dahl. They're they're my guys and. They're you great. know what they have in Moose Lodge? They have slot machines. Really? Yes. Oh, that's right. In in the. Yes. Last time we went, Susan won a hundred dollars. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Going back. And soon. then I met the fence. The fence man. Well, yeah. We <laughs> want to talk about. No, that we don't. No, he wanted me to be his Valentine. <laughs> well, Valentina. Right. <laughs> 
but he didn't want to take me to an expensive restaurant. He wanted he took to you go for Chinese. He wanted to get the lunch special <laughs> for I think it was eleven ninety nine each. Nice. He's very nice though. He's got a very big mustache. You know who he is, yeah, right? Yeah. Sure. So Mr. B. We'll call him Mr. B. Anyway, he was sweet. But we had a great time. So Good. this is great. So it's all exciting stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well we're gonna come back to you. So let's see some of what is this? This picture right here. Uh, Can well people see it? So Look at this. Uh, so he's going to uh, show it on the camera, but this is serendipity, which is a uh, I'm a sailing and yacht photographer. Jeez. I do it both drone work and stills. This was shot wow. from the committee boat f in Oyster Bay. Oyster and Bay, it's yep. beautiful in Oyster Bay. And it's just one of many images that are in our um, here, there, and here, there, everywhere. Yeah, um, a lot of photography, show. yeah. Yeah, 40 years. I, my first camera was 1965. So I got a whole lifetime full of um, full of images. And Beautiful. just recently, you know, with, with digital, everything is so tiny that um, you don't really get to see it. But now uh, we're taking all these digital images from the last 22 years when I went digital. And we're starting to print them up as 30 by 40. We bring them to different charities. And you raffle them off? Well, they get ra raffled off, usually auctioned, where they could be outright purchased, and we split the um, commission, the commission with, with, yeah, with the charity. The charity. So and what is that? It looks like a big sea turtle. So this one here is a sea turtle in the Cayman Islands. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a scuba diving instructor and underwater oh. f photographer and videographer. And if we look down below, we have, this is also, I guess, from the marine category of our images is a sea anemone from the Maldives in the Indian Ocean. And our last one, too, that I, I brought, I mean, I've got a thousand, oh uh, but goodness. I can only carry four at a time, <laughs> is um, a koala bear from a trip I did to Australia t uh, two years ago. Is it true Australia is just beautiful? The people are so mellow and their voices put you to sleep? Is no, no. Um, <laughs> you, you, uh, yes, there's somebody in Australia who's mellow, whose voice will put you to sleep. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of beautiful places uh, in Australia. Um, I, I, I had, I was lucky enough to go to the western side of Australia, where the uh, Ningaloo Reef is, where they have whale Ooh. sharks and giant uh, and whales and uh, all kinds of beautiful stuff, as well as going to. Um, the Great Barrier Reef and in the, the northeast, so it's most so it's in the north on the west and the north on the east, uh, as well as the trip to Bali, mm -hmm. where I managed to also go uh, throughout Indonesia to Komodo Island and take Boyhood Dream. I don't know about you, but you remember Johnny Quest? Oh sure. You remember in the opening they have the big lizard, yeah, right, the Komodo dragon. Yeah. Since then, I've always wanted to photograph Komodo dragons, and wow. so um, as part of my scuba diving and filming. I live on um, dive boats for a week to 10 days at a time. We uh -huh. go to different islands. Oh, my gosh. And so we went to Komodo. And so on that trip, lots of pictures of manta rays, octopus, but the best was definitely the Komodo dragons, which yeah. were Unbelievable. really Unbelievable. Like huge. Aquaman. Now, those pictures, how close are you actually? Like, is there a zoom, or were you actually close to the turtle, the koala? Uh, so I usually get that question about the sharks, because um, mm. the sharks... So, um, because underwater everything gets magnified, okay. so you need a wide-angle lens to be able to get a whole shark or a whole whale. And generally, I'm closer than we are now. Um, wow. quite my, uh, years ago, I did some shark video down in the Bahamas, and my wife looked at it, she smacked me. <laughs> because I'm there with the camera, and the you could hear the shark come right up against the camera, and they have scales. And as it swam along the edge of the of the lens of the port, you could hear the scraping wow. uh, of it, and it knocked wow. me over. So Jeez. you're uh, brave. No, um, <laughs> the sharks are are really beautiful, oh. um, most of the th and very graceful. Really. And most of the time, you know, they've already eaten, and they're not really interested in us. We're not what they eat. They, you know, the smaller. Well, sharks, then why do people? Why do they? bite people and cut their legs off. I well, mean, most of the time by mistake. By um, mistake? Absolutely. If you look at a surfer and you look at a turtle, 
right? The, the surf is going like this. That looks just like a seal or a sea lion. Uh, great white coming up from underneath just sees a shadow. They see a turtle or a sea lion. They don't see a person. Um, other right. types oh, of sharks. Oh, I see it. Okay, I see uh, what you're saying. Tiger sharks are curious. They investigate things by biting them. So they'll bite you and say, I don't want to eat you, and they'll swim away. And But you, you might bleed to death. But, you know... <laughs> World you just might might bleed to death. But, but worldwide, <laughs> there are less than 15 deaths due to sharks, right. shark bites every year. So if you think about how many people live on or close to the water and are in the water, that's a really, really small number. Yeah, I guess. You and know. Now when you're doing that, do you have any kind of protective gear or weaponry in case something goes wrong? Like a... No, you mm -hmm. just down it with your camera. No, but you know, I'm there with Scooby gear. Yeah, so you protect right. it somewhat. Well, well right. I so th really, if a shark is aggressive, mm -hmm. you, you can just go to the bottom and they'll swim away. They don't really care about you so much. But I've I've seen lots of footage, especially in Hawaii, with great whites of snorkelers going down, free divers going down and swimming with the sh with, with great whites, 15, 18 foot great whites. They even have names for these guys. And, th and they hold the fin and they swim with them. Wow. Um, that's brave. Wow. You know, sco Scooby it's gear. Interesting. Not, not quite as much. So to my Breakfast Club members, say hi. Patricia Balestras, mm -hmm. uh, Bucket List Tours. And then... Um, I helped oh. her launch that when, when, when she had a launch party. You did? At oh. Cradle of Aviation. We had some great yes. photos for her. Yes, it's Marguerite McGinnis, she's the one that you photographed in the water, right? Or was it you or was it? So so Marguerite I photographed at um, Underground. Gold, Star, Gold Star Beach yes. in Huntington. Yes, gorgeous. Um, yeah, we did that for Model Citizens Magazine. I photographed yeah. Model Citizens Magazine and I published Long Island Portfolio. And I, I'm, she's uh, beautiful. I'm always she's talking gorgeous. to actors, producers, directors, artists of all kinds. Mm. Of course, painters, sculptors. But perhaps we should talk about yeah, um, wh whether there's a place for you uh, to do something in the ma magazine. And he uh, also does um, a lot of charity work. He does a lot of free singing yeah. and all that kind of yeah, stuff. So Model yeah. Citizens Magazine, their purpose is actually to help uh, people who are philanthropic promote themselves, their business, and their charities. Okay. Uh, photographically, you can't beat the quality oh, of the photos in the, in the magazine. John uh, Joseph Dowling Jr., who's, right. who's actually my partner with... The Long Island portfolio, hmm. it's world class photography. They don't, you, you might find as good, but you don't find any better. Yeah. And right. he is so great at working with people. And, you know, it's called Model Citizens about them being good, but he makes everybody look like a model. Yeah, well, everybody, Marguerite. Everybody Do you know that Greg, my co host, was supposed to be in the shoot with Marguerite, but then they picked a different man? Originally, Greg was going to be in it. Oh, really? That's a big story. We tease, we tease her mm -hmm. about it a lot. But Marguerite wrote already two books, third book on the way. Yeah. And she's a big part of the Breakfast Club. She comes here a lot. And she's part of, does a lot of volunteer work for the Angels. Yeah, for, I, not just the Angels, for a lot of the charities. Yeah, I know. Well, I know, you know, I met her because of her book. Because yeah. Red Penguin, who is my publisher, who I work with, published her book. Oh, who? who, who Stephanie her? Larkin. And I know Stephanie Larkin. Yeah. She's in a networking group with me called Adrian's Network. Yes. So Stephanie, so Stephanie is Stephanie. a big part of G's as well and the show. And it's just weird how everything comes full circle. Mm. It really, really is. Yeah. And, um, you know, what we do at the Writers Club, Long Island Writers Club, is we talk you and you into writing a book. And from the book, everything changes your life. So um, and Tony recently. Ducey, um, oh, I love him. Tony. He's yeah. awesome. I love him. Um, so recently, we were lucky enough, Greg and I, we did the red carpet interview at the um, Merrick Cinema and at uh, Russo's on the Bay with the brand new movie that just came out called Familia 2 with Joe Simonera. Cool. He's a producer. So I just there. made up this whole thing, and it was great. We had a wonderful time. Russo's is like, forget about it, gorgeous. And we met, I'd say, every actor in the movie and a few producers. And again, and if it wasn't for Jerry, I wouldn't have done that. Because with my experience with you is how I'm learning how right. to do these things. Yep. And it's weird how one book can change the life, your life just because. And, you know, I came from corporate America and the Nassau County. Mm -hmm. I worked for the county. And I was supposed to be doing all this for the county and it didn't happen. Right. So in, in hindsight, best thing I did was lose my job and write my book. 
I, I think that, um, and I was in corporate America. Um, I know you were. You know, for, yeah. for so many years, and I've been through a couple of layoffs. And every time something's happened, whether it's the early retirement or the layoff, was an opportunity right. to choose another direction and, and a better direction. Is opportunity. You know, one door closes, another one opens. And we believe in that at the club because, mm -hmm. yep. you know, we just have a meeting. We have our meetings here now, thanks to Greg, the great Greg. Because we used to go in diners every, every weekend or every other month. And we actually have, everybody loves this place. And it's used, you know, you could rent parties here, you could have corporate here, book launches, anything. Photo shoots. The Photo shoots, e yeah. E easily, right. the place is really well set up. The dance floor, that wall behind the dance yeah, floor. Yeah, it's beautiful. I could easily see doing uh, a, a fashion Ma, you show You could do a here. fashion show here, absolutely. Now, let me ask you, are you <laughs> doing what you love? Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, so isn't that what, what it's about? That's like what life's when about. When, when Look you find yeah. your lo what you love to do, you're good you're at it, it, and, and then it's not work, right? And things grow. Right. It's almost like you can imagine if somebody handed you a million dollars for doing what you're doing, you'd be like, all right, you put it in the bank, but you're still doing what, what you love to do. Uh, right. Uh, exactly. That's uh, I took my early retirement in 2017. I had I was working for Cody, an international, multi, multinational, global company, um, ten billion dollars in sales e every year. And I had the option, I could have just gone to work for anybody, and I said, you know what, I want my time. Right. Time is really what, what I want, because at, at that point, the like in the younger. city, I, I couldn't do any charity work, and all my focus was on them, and it was good. I loved my job. Of I was the manager uh, yeah. of sales technology. I had a wonderful oh, job, and I loved it. That you went on a lot of trips. And I went on a lot of trips. I know, because exactly. I worked in media technology. Mm -hmm. so. Right, and I went on I a lot of trips. Them. <laughs> did great photography as a result of that. But when it came time, you know, at 55, do I go back into the corporate world? I said, right. you know what? I'll, I'll trade all the money in the world for all the time in the world. And, you and know, that's, that's the thing. You're second and third act, and that's what we do with the club as well. We do coaching, and we help people. You lost your job? Let's talk about it. Let's see what else you want to do. Do what you love. Volunteer. You'll wind up working mm -hmm. somewhere that you love because you'll be hanging out with people that are there because they want to be, not right. because they have mm -hmm. to be. So I do personal branding photography that, of course, includes headshots. Oh. And I actually donate um, headshots to a group called Exchange Consultants of New York. And what they do is they train people. They have a really long, big program. I do headshots for their members to help them. Get a job, yeah, and help them right. Get their job. So, yeah. if you're doing something similar, well, that yeah. we could set up a day. Maybe we could do a big event one day about jobs and professional the, mm -hmm. the look, and maybe yeah. even a video for each person. Like, this is my job. I am so and so. I would like a job in so and so. Well, now you, you know, corporate headshots or acting headshots. Uh, everything. everything. I, I, I've got actors. Um, Real estate agents, um, doctors. Yeah. One of my pra big practices is, is medical pra practices. Is one company, um, Spectrum. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is. Um, I, they're also uh, <coughs> optical consultants of Long Island. They send me to do all their all their surgeons. Uh, well, this is a good connection. We just had the doctors all from Northwell on. Mm -hmm. They took the hour. Everybody loved the show, and we also had the spine doctors. Three offices, Dr. Demora, mm -hmm. all over Long Island. So, you know, networking is good. We'll find about a lot of things that we could all help each other with. Yeah. And look, you could get your your next big... When he does a photo shoot, he sends out 17, and then you got to pick one. <laughs> that's what you do, <laughs> Well, That's, I that's how I met you. Is that... No. You sent... You were on Facebook, and you sent all your headshots out. And you said, which one? And that's how we met. That's how we met? That's how we I met. I knew you longer than that. Yeah, it's about three years. Yeah, I guess so. I never used any of those headshots. No, well, I remember, though, picking one that I really liked. I don't like any of them. And was then a better, there was a best one. Well, I thought I you were like I thought you were cute, so I was like, I'm gonna that's pick. That's why. Yeah, I'm gonna pick one of these shots, and that's yeah. how we became and friends. And I never make the choice if I if I do 150 shots of somebody in a session, right. and there's all different styles. You know, there's the Peter Hurley style, uh, white light, triangle lighting, right. cl close crop. Some people like that. Others like a little s side light on the back of the head, with with some shoulders coming out of a dark background. Whatever somebody needs, you know. We match that style, but people who don't know what they want when they walk in the door are very difficult to satisfy. Right. Really? That's a shame. Now, yeah. it's an interesting topic with, with the headshots and the industry itself because it seems like a lot of times people get bogged down with 
the headshot, the procedure, the border. It's like writing a screenplay and it's got to be on this mm -hmm. software. And it's like, I mean, I, yes, that's true. And you want to keep to the industry standard. Mm -hmm. But I think also it's like making bridge the gap. You know, you make a film. If someone likes it, mm -hmm. if they like what you've got, yeah, they're going to go with it. Yeah, I mean, the headshots so ha have, have changed um, a, a lot. It's much more free form. You know, you don't do a lot of black and white anymore. Um, you no longer have the white border, but if you do, nobody complains. Right. You're not pu putting someone's name on front. You're putting it on the back, unless you put it on front. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. And, and people, what I what I tell everyone who comes to see me, whoever you're working with in the industry, they told you to go find a photographer. Whatever they want is the right thing to give them. Uh, you know, it's that that right. first one. Any photograph, you can add all that stuff to a, to a headshot. Mm -hmm. So what's important is that uh, the headshot shows that you're friendly to and good to work with, and if you're really someone who plays particular parts, um, that your range comes up in that series of headshots. Um, mm -hmm. What you do to the headshot's not nearly as important as that you, someone looks at and says, yeah, I want to work with that guy for this role, or, or yeah, she's beautiful and she's perfect for what I'm doing or she's got the look, or as soon as someone looks at a picture and says, well, I don't like that person, unless they're looking for a mean person. Right. That, and and uh, then if she gross. opens her mouth and she doesn't fit the role, then the photo doesn't mean anything, right? I mean, well, if you don't yeah, like the way she sounds. If the, if the photo doesn't match what the person is. Yeah. yeah, yeah you want a photo yeah. that's going to represent yourself. I mean, when I do casting, it's, yeah. you know. But w when you do casting, don't you have a visual representation that you start from? It's yes. Oh, I think this is what I'm looking for from a look perspective. But I never sit there and go, oh, the background's blurry or it's not blurry. I'm not – like, it it's doesn't even enter into it. Mm -hmm. You want the picture to, to just represent the individual. Mm -hmm. That's – it's that simple. And if you have a picture that represents the individual, to me, don't get so bogged down. I, I talk to actors, and they're, like, getting neurotic and crazy, and then they post them on Facebook, and people list all the reasons why it's wrong, and I'm like – you well, people know. have a lot to say. Trust right. me. So you can get Especially I think Facebook when you do the show. and social media has right. opened up this whole Pandora's box of insanity. But and, you and know, LinkedIn as well. Yeah, but you right. learn to not take anything personal. I no, mean, because no, if you do, a lot you, of you're actors in the wrong will, uh, will cry after a headshot session. Cry. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be, be, because uh, yeah. because they, they this is what they look like. <laughs> Yeah, they want to look different. Right, yeah. so, so they've got a vision. A lot of people have a vision of, of themselves that doesn't really match with reality. And I don't do a lot of retouching, but I, I, I studied with someone in California who does a lot of retouching. And I can't tell you the names, but he told me, he showed me the befores and the afters for these stars who always come in and their agent says, yeah, you don't have to worry about retouching. And I'd see the before and I'd see the after and I'd say, yeah, there's no way that before is ever going to be public. The, uh, because right. it, it just completely, um, uh, it, it just doesn't match yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the story that someone's telling about themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, my, my thing is, you know, be true to yourself. Be who you are. Be happy with who you are. And it's all going to come through. I mean, you know. Yeah, but sometimes not. Y yeah. So yeah, but that's what I believe so because so I'm, you know, small potatoes. The director, uh, Maria de Filippone, who did the, yeah. the, the, the director of the movies yes, that I worked she's on. she's wonderful. S she is absolutely wonderful. But if you look at her headshot, I told her to put on red lipstick, and I told her to put on brighter red lipstick. She goes, I don't wear red lipstick. But if you look at those headshots. She did it, though? Yeah. Yeah, it makes all the difference in the world. Absolutely. Because the goal is make people stop and look at you. If right. you can't catch somebody's eye mm -hmm. it, it, in less than a second, they're right. just going on to the next person. Well, that's true, especially in that business. So, yeah. so that little trick of her, and she's got bl blonde hair and blue eyes. Yes, yeah, beautiful. But mm -hmm. you, you don't, that's not enough to make somebody right. stop. For her, red lipstick and um, I don't know if we did earrings or, or, or a necklace, but something that... that Striking. Th use that headshot. Right, to to make sure that people are looking striking at you. piece, mm -hmm. right? And, and get and, and make that introduction and be f and, and be friendly because it's the first chance. Absolutely. So now, when right. you guys you know put something out like you're gonna have a movie or a shoot and you're looking for someone, what do you do? You just tell people. You go to the 
the, the, the you know, how do people find out? Well, I have a, a, a Facebook page called mm -hmm. Long Island Models, Headshot, uh, Photographers, Models, Actors, Makeup Artists. Okay, so you have so that. We, we, so we, we post there like 250 members, and they tell their friends. Okay. Mo right? Yeah, you know, I think I've seen that page. Yeah, of course. It's yeah. famous. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, it's up there. We don't yeah. have a lot going on on it, but when someone posts something in, you know, there's, there's enough people to say, "Oh, I'm interested." You know, we want directors. We want more film people and directors on, on there because we want people to be able to say, "Well, I came here and I found something." Right. And and I, I had originally just done it because I was bored. Right. Right. Uh, I had some extra time and I wanted to do a couple more model portfolios, so I. So I, I did the page, and it's uh, about three years, and mm -hmm. um, it's got a little bit of churn. Oh, definitely. You're all over the place, as Jerry is, too. I mean, everything just grows. That's sort of right. like what happens. It's when you put yourself out there and start doing different things. And Long Island is pretty big these days, you know. A lot going on out here. Yeah, I, um, I was on film set for a film last in Lindenhurst. Um, yeah, called no Christmas sure. versus the Walters. Yep. Um, with Joseph D'Onofrio, who I think you. He, you he's know. actually coming on our show. Yeah, you he, know that he, I know him? Yeah, I show him. We've got a whole story yes. on him coming up in the next issue. Yeah. It's already out on the blog. Yeah. That, that Christmas scene over in the in the village there? Yes. Yep. Uh, so I was on set, so I interviewed him at Branzino's, a restaurant on 110. Food was great. Yes. Right. And then he got me on, on set. That was awesome. He's very nice. Isn't Lindenhurst a great little town to. Gotcha, Dora. Do you remember? I, I just my band there? just played there. Well, well the I one down on Montauk Highway. So they used to have one um, on whatever the main. Wellwood, it's still well, there. On they Wellwood, have, they still have two there. restaurants in there. I remember bringing my, my mother-in-law there 25 years ago to yep. for the mussels, just for the mussels. Yeah, yeah well. Great food, great mm -hmm. people, really nice people. Mm -hmm. And Lindenhurst is, you know, the, the it's kind of charming. It's, yeah, well, and they're we doing a lot there. They're really you. building it up, it's, and uh, it's that's really why we chose this for the festival. Yeah, you know? it's kind of charming. It really, yeah. really is. And and we film there. We we've done a lot of filming there. It's a nice yeah. place to shoot. No, I had we had a great time. Yeah. I just can't believe it's three days this year. Yeah. Susan, we're gonna have to get a hotel. <laughs> we're gonna have to build a hotel. <laughs> build a hotel. That would be great. Well, that's I the thing about tent. like the Hamptons and like the uh, the Glens Falls Film Festival. They do it in like the whole village, but they have hotels. Right. There's no hotel near the nearest one is Massapequa. In in the where the film festival. Is. Right. Yeah. So uh, we might even like as we grow hook up with them so people can stay overnight, but they'd have to go to Massapequa. It's not you know it's five minutes. Yeah, minutes. that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, Please. you know, it all works out. You get a discounted. It's like a wedding block. And I mean, Same thing. what's it's happened like a wedding to the block. film industry? You know, the f I think the film festivals are going to change. You're going to see them evolve because movie theaters are still not open, undefined. Yeah. W are movies going back into the Steven Spielberg just signed a Netflix deal? Like, is everybody just going to be gonna sitting home watching movies, TV? I know. Let's hope not. Uh, I hope not. Because a lot of people are going to go Maybe it's these business. independent but films uh, that are going to take the place. Yeah, but you know what? Those independent films have a place on Netflix for sure. Right. On Netflix, on Amazon, they're crying for content. Yep. And actually, and they're really crying for good content. Good content. Yes. Uh, I actually watch Netflix, and I watch a lot of things that are filmed overseas and dubbed. It's kind of strange when you watch something like Three Percent that's filmed in um, in Brazil, and the natural language is, is Portuguese, but you're hearing the actors in English. Right. And they're doing a really good job of the du of the overdubbing. And then you watch something from Germany or Poland, and you have that same same voiceover, and, mm. and the disconnect yes. of of the voices, but um, the content is really amazing. Some great right. great stories yeah, out there. We're also um, speaking of voiceovers, we're teaching that a little bit at the club too. I just did one, my first voiceover mm. for a spa. Cool. And I I did it. I, you know, it wasn't even that hard, and you don't even have to interview. You just send your voiceover. You know, on a little MP3. You have a distinct voice. I know. Well, this one I had to be calm for. I had to be. It was a spa where you're relaxing. So I have all different voices now that I learned how to do it. So I teach that to the club members as well. Because when you're 50 or over and you don't look, you look older <laughs> or you have a lot of gray hair, then you don't have to interview. You know what you my secret is to not having gray hair? What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I said to my brother at, at my nephew's wedding a couple of weeks ago, and he's all gray, and he's younger than me. So, mm -hmm. 
Uh, how, how, how did they get over that? 62? Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I have no idea how old you are, but if you have hair, you'll always look young. That's well, that's true, but... I'm 56. Uh, yeah, you're young, Jerry. You're yeah, young, I'm young. Yeah. The damn kids. Yeah, I'm yeah. way older than him. You know what? I feel it. I feel I'm older young. than how you, too. <laughs> Probably one of the oldest ones in the group. But um, I don't care. You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, age is a number. You're alive and you got things to do. Exactly. 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 But busy. speaking of gray hair, it's very popular now. Women are paying to dye their hair gray because the look of gray is very popular. I personally don't like it. That's I me. I think you look older. A woman in gray it, hair looks older. It doesn't older. bother me if it's like anything else. Stylish. Just take care of it and make it stylish. Right. You know, but it's, I personally, me personally, I'm not it saying it it's good. wrong. Personally, I would not do it. If I have gray, it's getting covered. Uh -huh. but you just said be yourself and be right. natural. Uh, uh, and but don't be gray. But don't no, be but not gray. <laughs> I even used to talk Anything men. Anything but that. No, I used to talk men at the breakfast club. Girl, your hair gray. Well, now women like the men with gray hair. I know, but you know. when you need a job, you want to look younger. That's Unfortunately, very true. 47 interviews, guys. I know. Grecian Formula 44. Yes. <laughs> So, first of all, I want to thank our sponsors, okay? Tranquility Spa, right here in Franklin Square. Have you gone yet? I have not. Did I give you a coupon yet? Yes. Probably. So, here, here's another one to go. Okay. You and your wife get to go to the awesome. spa. Meet Angela. You call the number. You will be going in the salt cave. I'm sure you've done it already. I have not done salt cave. Because okay. I, I do salt water, but my wife does salt <laughs> cave. All right. Well, the both of you go. You tell them Valentina sent you. Uh -huh. Meet the owner. And it's a delicious, great place. And in the North Shore, they charge you thirty dollars, uh, one hundred and thirty for a foot massage. And here, because of the show, you get it for thirty. Sweet. So Tranquility Spa, seven hundred Franklin Avenue, Franklin Square. Talk to Angela. Tell them the show sent you. And then we have Aura Puro Jewelers, Hempstead Turnpike, Franklin Square. You get hot cappuccino when you go and tell Teddy the show sent you. Very good prices. Aura Puro Jewelers, thank you, Teddy. Jackson Hewitt Prince, the tax guy in Franklin Square, 978 Hempstead Turnpike. And last but not least, Envy 3 Salon, brand new salon right down the block. Beautiful women. T uh, they have Botox, they have nails, they have hair, they have everything. And last, also QS2 training, you need CPR training. Talk to Liz Box. Liz Box is my sister. She does CPR training for your family, for your friends, in your backyard, in your kitchen, or in your office. Very important. As a scuba diving instructor, yes. I was also a CPR instructor. And Very on important. top of that, um, you know, she's done a lot, and I do a lot of talks for her. And when I ask people in a room of 50 people, how many of you are CPR trained? Not half. Because mm -hmm. people are afraid of giving CPR in case mm -hmm. someone sues them which is very scary because if you save someone, it's going to be someone you love. It's not going to be a stranger. Right. And so I preach that, and I help my sister, and she does great work. So mm -hmm. she also has a book called, it's a, a book about um, children, three years old, how to learn about masks and what happened with the pandemic. And it's all hands-on book, uh, you know, artwork, and with a little saying next to it, teaches the kids how to stay safe with their mask. Very cool. So. Anything else before you uh, go ahead? Could just kind of walk me through your listening? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, awesome. I just had to confirm that, that, I, that, that I. We I love giving our, our people discounts. Yeah, Are you it, kidding? It, That's it, what it, we as do. As you mentioned, Valentina and the Breakfast Club, um, we'll, do, uh, we'll take 10% off our personal branding photography sessions and 10% off advertising in the Long Island portfolio. Just make sure you, you, you mention. Um, Valentina, and happy to do that for people. And Greg, who the great Greg, who's not mm. here. Who's not here. You didn't get to meet him, but you will next time. Mm -hmm. And um, we Well, as, as long know. as we're doing that, just remember to go to uh, filmfreeway.com. All you filmmakers out there, actors, producers, anybody in the business, talk to the people on your team. Um, we're taking submiss submissions till the middle of August. August 15th is the end of submissions. We are offering a discount right now. If you go to the website, you'll see it. You can go to... Uh, filmfreeway.com or nyliff.com yeah, n-y-l-i-f-f -F -F. and, and come to see Elvis on and Saturday you, and you need to send me that so I can put it out to everyone and you know it's Al Molinaro's 
birthday today? I did not know that. Marry the cop, so. So there you go. The nose so is ask here. the nose a question. We're almost done. Ask me a question. Ask you a question. The nose knows. The nose knows. Mm -hmm. ask, ask you a question. So where's the place to be um, this weekend? This weekend. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I thought the nose knows. Well, the nose knows, but this well, weekend, gonna I'm going to have to think about it. Oh, I know where. Why should I answer? Be he's saying, why should he answer it? I'm going to answer it. Sal Valentinetti, Saturday night. He's playing at Mulcahy's. Me and Susan have a front row seat because I'm one of his fans. I'm related to him, not really, but I got related to him because our names match. And that's how I met Sal Valentinetti. I'm Valentina. His parents... His grandmother, his sister, will have the same names as my parents, my grandmother, and my sister. Really? We're very good friends now, and we have front row seats when he comes in. Wow. So go see Sal. Call Mulcahy's. Tell him that the Breakfast Club sent you. And the nose didn't know that. I did. Nose knows nothing. This is true. This is one of Greg's favorite things. And also, everybody, please go to Amazon Prime. Watch Familia 2. Joe Simonera, he needs comments. He wants to you to tell him how you liked it. It's free right now. Go to Amazon Prime and watch it. And uh, think about it because it's a great movie. And we had a ball, Greg and I. Great I time. don't know if you saw yep. some of the pictures on Facebook. Not yet. Yeah, we had a ball. And uh, we met all the actors. And I stayed late. Greg went home early, but I did not. Yeah, leave. I didn't see him there. I well, he was there. But okay. No, he was there at the, at the, sh at the Russo's. He was oh, at the movie. Oh, oh. He was in the back. Because he, okay. he saved my st spot for my friend. He sat with Right, because when I came and saw you, I didn't see him over there. Yeah. He was in the back. And then we went to Russo's, but he wanted to leave. And I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm not <laughs> leaving until the end. <laughs> so he came back here because they had a party here. He's a businessman, has to be here. And I stayed till the end. And Joseph Monero, we appreciate what you did. Yep. And it was a great show. Congratulations great on the film. And you guys are great guests. I hope you come back. And we have stuff to talk about. Definitely. Yeah. And that's a wrap.